Welcome to Acids and Bases Part 7, Buffers. This is a, a key concept in um, the health of our body. We need to have buffer systems to keep us alive and well. Let's figure out and learn about exactly what buffer systems are. So buffers are a combination of substances that act together to prevent drastic changes in pH. Um, the typical buffer systems are a weak acid and its conjugate base. All right, and so this is a concept from the Bronston Lowry definition of acids and bases. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about here, please go back to that tutorial. And so the other important part about buffers is typically they are going to be at similar concentrations. All right, so. Um, here it is in English, Sim symbolically, so we would have like a weak acid, and we would add in some of its conjugate base, and um, these concentrations would be similar. So the concentration of HA would be approximately equal to the concentration of A minus. This would be our ideal buffer system. All right, so we'll just keep thinking in terms of HA, right, our acid, and A minus, our conjugate base. And so let's look at a generic buffer system. So here we have the ideal buffer system. So in the ideal buffer system, we have our conjugate acid, our acid and our conjugate base pair at equal concentrations. So we have a weak acid and a weak base. Now, if our system um, has an, there's an introduction of H plus, right? So if, it, if we add H plus, all right, what's the H plus going to do? The H plus reacts with the A minus and it produces HA. All right. So we can see here that we lose some of our A minus because it reacts with H plus and we produce more HA, right? So the concentration of HA increases and A minus decreases. But notice that there's still buffer capacity, right? So here's our ideal buffer, and there are still weak acid and conjugate base present, so if more acid or base is added, there are more, um, there are components of the buffer system to react. Now, what happens if we add hydroxide to our buffer system, right? The hydroxide is going to react with the weak acid, and that's going to produce, right, water plus A minus. So we'll see that we lose, right, our HA concentration decreases. We're going to lose some of our weak acid, and we're going to produce some additional conjugate base. However, the buffer system is still able to react with additional acid or base. So we still have a buffer system. Okay, but we can see where this is going. There is the concept of buffer capacity. Eventually, if we added a huge amount of hydrogen ions or a huge amount of hydroxide, we may run out of our buffer substances. So we describe that as the buffer capacity, the greatest amount of acid or base that a buffer system can accommodate while maintaining the pH, right? So whenever we hear the words pH, we recognize that's the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. And so the whole idea of buffers, right, is to maintain the pH. So um, we don't, we, we have to, there are, there can be limits. To a buffer system. Okay, so now that we have a sense of the overall um, theory behind buffer systems, Let's look at the two important buffering systems um, in our body. 
Um, amino acids are another one, but we're not ready to talk about those yet. So we'll talk about the buffering systems in the body that we are able to talk about so far. So um, when we're talking about buffering systems, it's really about equilibrium and acid-base chemistry. So if you haven't had a chance, you will probably want to review the equilibrium video tutorial before trying this page. Okay, so let's go back to our example of hyperventilation, right, where breathing is, is too fast. The, um, the CO2 is controlled through our breath, and the, the hydrogen ions and the bicarbonate, this has to do with our, um, these are found in our blood. So the bicarbonate system is primarily responsible for helping, um, helping to maintain the pH of our blood. All righty. So if we are breathing very fast, what does that do to our CO2 concentration in our, in our blood? It's going to decrease it because we're exhaling very quickly. So that's going to shift the equilibrium to the left. All righty. Um, so we already answered this question. We would expect the patient's blood CO2 concentration to decrease because of our rapid breath rate. What happens to the hydrogen ion concentration? Well, if we've shifted the equilibrium to the left, where the body's pulling out the hydrogen ions, so we would have a decrease in the hydrogen ion concentration. So now we bring in the last piece about pH, right? So since the pH is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, and if this value is decreasing, what happens to the pH? Then the pH increases because of the negative log relationship. All right? So we would have an increased pH because there is less hydrogen ions present. So we would expect the pH to increase. All righty. Now let's look at the phosphate buffer system that we were introduced to in the earlier equilibrium tutorial. In this phosphate buffer system, this, as we know, this helps to regulate the pH inside our cells. So if somebody has renal failure, they are not able to excrete the dihydrogen phosphate. So normally, the dihydrogen phosphate is um, excreted in our urine. But if we're not able to urinate, what's going to happen, right? We're going to get a buildup of dihydrogen phosphate. So renal failure is going to create an increase in the concentration of the dihydrogen phosphate. So let's put that onto our equilibrium teeter-totter. The dihydrogen phosphate is on the reactant side. So we are going to have an increase. That's going to push our teeter-totter to the right. So it shifts the equilibrium to the right, which is the products, right? And what's a product? Hydrogen's a product. So we would expect the hydrogen ion concentration to increase. And so now the last point to bring in then is what does that do to the pH? So the pH is, right, once again, the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So if we're increasing the hydrogen ion concentration, we are lowering the pH. All right? Because there's more H plus. So that's a, a very important relationship that as we lower the hydrogen ion concentration, the pH increases. And as we increase the hydrogen ion concentration, we lower 
the um, pH. So we could say that as we lower the pH, it's becoming, the solution is becoming more acidic. And as we raise the pH, we're saying that, that the solution is going to become more basic. All righty. So that concludes the, um, the buffer tutorial. And I hope you'll take a few, few minutes now to work a few homework problems to reinforce your understanding.